Hey everybody, what is up? I am the Mac Mage back with another Mac Basic. And in this video, we're going to be talking all about icons, so stay tuned. So in this video, I wanted to talk about every kind of icon on your Mac that you would want to change. And I've seen videos similar to this done before, but A, they are kind of all outdated, and B, everything is so much simpler now. So I'm going to show you how to change folder icons, dock application icons, and I'm also going to show you what to do about protected icons. The other thing that I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to change your user logo icon. So any kind of icon change you would ever want to make will be in this video tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. And the easiest thing to show you how to do is to change a folder icon. So let's say you have this folder here and you want this for all of your photos. So just rename this icon photos. What you're going to want to do is go to your web browser, type in photos icon. Now, you can also type in PNG, and what that PNG is going to do is it's going to make sure that you get an uh, image that does not have a background. Now, you don't have to type in PNG, you can just type in icon, but it just kind of, you get the icons right away like that. If you choose something like this, and you see these little checkered um, these little checkered things in the background, that means that your image is transparent and that is a good image to use. And you don't have to just click uh, check on check for photo icons. You can also check for camera icons as well. And once you've found the icon you want, all you have to do is save image. No copying, no downloading, nothing. Go back to your folder and you're going to bring up your context menu and select get info or you can click command I and this will bring up the same menu. This is the information panel or the information menu. Now I'm going to zoom up a bit so you can see what I'm about to do because it's a, bit, very, a little bit hard to tell. So what I'm going to do is click on this folder. So did you see what I did? It's highlighted, not highlighted. You're going to want to highlight it. Highlight the folder. Once you highlight the folder, click Command V. And Command V will post your new icon here. So it will change it there. It will change it there. And most importantly, it will change it in your folder or for your folder. Let's take an icon, let's say photos, and say you want to change this icon. Bring up your context menu, go to options, show in finder, and then once you're able to locate it in finder, do pretty much the same thing, command I, or um, the context menu and get info, highlight your icon, and then command V. Did you hear that sound? That is what is called a warning sound that will let you know that this is a protected icon. Now, usually it is Apple's icons that have that, so I'm going to move on real quick and I'm going to come back to that, so keep that in mind. Now, um, let's say you want to change something else that is independent of Apple, my Kodi icon. I'm gonna find an icon that I want, and then I'll show you how to do that. I have my Kodi icon that I want, so as I showed you earlier, it's pretty much the same thing. Show Options, show in Finder, find your icon in Finder, click Command I or the context menu, highlight your icon up here in the upper right hand, left hand corner, and command V, it'll change it there, it'll change it there, and most importantly, it'll change it there. Now, it may not change it here right away, and all you need to do to change that is to open up the program. We're going to go ahead and change one more easy icon before we get into something that is a little more difficult, being protected icons. So, we're going to learn how to change our user login icon. Now this is the icon that you set up when you set up your MacBook. And so what you're going to want to do to, to change that 
is either from the Apple menu or from your dock. You're going to want to click on System Preferences. Then you're going to want to click on Users and Groups. And then you're going to see your image right here. And then what you're going to do is click on your image. And then once you click on your image, you can see all of these little images that you can choose from. And if none of these suit what you would like, all you would have to do is go back to our trusty Google, find an image that screams you. <coughs> so I decided to go with my own little logo here so that we when I log in, I just have my logo. So what I'm going to do is, if you have whatever picture you have on your desktop, just go ahead and drag it in and just lay it over where your icon is. Then what you can do is simply drag and drop where you want this to, to be, where you, how you want it to look. And then once you're done, click done. And there you have it. So now whenever you log in, you're going to see your new login icon. If you're on El Capitan, which is Apple's latest software, you're going to have a whole world of trouble trying to change any icon that is protected under the El Capitan suite. Now, those include any icons such as um, FaceTime and I think email was another one, photos, of course, as you've seen. Uh, there's a couple of icons that were bundled in with the new uh, Apple software, and it makes it absolutely impossible um, to ha have an easy solution to change these icons. If customization is something that is a really big thing for you, there are a couple of solutions. Now, the reason that this is such a problem now is because with El Capitan came a new feature, which is called System Integrity Protection. System in Integrity Protection, or SIP, is a new security feature that was installed and introduced with El Capitan. Now, what this is designed to do is it's kind of basically essential. It's like uh, an antivirus built in, antivirus program built into your Mac. It's just kind of to add some extra protection. Is it necessary? Is it unnecessary? That's kind of going to be up to you to judge. I'm going to leave a link in the description that talks about it's a really good discussion thread on why or why not to disable the SIP um, perimeters. Now that's going to be entirely up to you guys because I'm not taking any responsibility for anything you guys do. This is all on you and it's going to require a lot of reading. Disabling SIP is very easy. It does require a restart of your computer and a reboot of your OS. It doesn't mean you're going to wipe anything out. It simply means you have to turn your computer off, turn it on while following some steps and it will allow you to kind of disable SIP for the moment. Then you can change your icons and then, you know, um, turn the perimeters back on so that you have that extra security. Some people choose to leave it off, some don't. It's just really your preference. I'm going to leave that link with that really good discussion in the description and I'm also going to be leaving the steps to disable SIP in the description as well so you can make your own decision. So hopefully I was able to answer any of the questions you guys had on icon changes, especially where El Capitan is concerned. If you found my video enjoyable or helpful, please make sure to like with a thumbs up or share. You can even tweet my videos out as well. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. If you feel so inclined, please hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out a lot. I try to do about five videos a week so that I cover as many things as possible because especially when new users are concerned, there's always something coming up. For the latest in tech and coding news, please make sure to follow me on Twitter at MacMage underscore tech. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.